Okay, let's get started. So this was week 10 um, for my independent study, um, which was going over uh, render layers and compositing. So I wanted to take a deeper dive and try to learn a little bit more about, uh, you know, different render passes, how to composite them together, you know, looking into some more technical things like alpha channels and also bit depth. And so I tried to cover um, some of those things this week um, through kind of this little mini project here. I just kind of created the shot of this kind of retro computer with this cool HUD display going on. So I'm just going to give kind of a broad overview of the workflow between Maya and After Effects. Um, there's honestly a lot of steps involved and it took a long time to kind of create the shot start to finish. So I'm only going to cover the big important uh, pieces of information that I learned and also kind of like big steps and important things to keep in mind when you're in a workflow that's similar to this one. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump into it. So the first thing I did was uh, just created this really simple scene. I wanted to do kind of like a retro computer with this, you know, cool HUD display going on. And I couldn't find like a free model of a computer. So I just I just went and modeled one. And um, if you want this same model, um, it's free on my Gumroad. So uh, go in, uh, links in the description, you can, go and, uh, you can go and download that if you want to use this one. So um, I just made the very simple scene. And the next thing I did was I set up this camera shot. Um, so we have a very simple kind of... Uh, camera shot going on where it just kind of rotates around and it pushes in just a little bit um, and the important thing here uh, that I found when working with compositing is uh, there's actually very little variation in this animation so if I pull up the animation editor going to graph editor you'll see that these tangents are linear which means that it's really easy to do any kind of tracking if you need to because you see this is a straight line and so uh, it's basically point A to point B, which is the end of your sequence here, right? Frame 120. So if you can just have two keyframes there, it makes it makes all the post work a lot easier. So that's kind of like how I try to speed up this shot a little bit in terms of, you know, getting it made and tracking and everything later on when we do the HUD display. So that was one thing there. Um, the next step I did, so we created the shot, we added our camera movement, and now we're going to set up some of our render layers. So um, the first thing that I went and did was I basically opened up the render settings and we're going to go into our AOVs and I just added a bunch of AOVs into the active section right here. So I knew that I was going to be working with diffuse and specular um, and also emission and Z depth because I wanted to do a little bit of depth of field and I also wanted kind of um, these, I wanted these lights here to kind of, I wanted more control over these so I can kind of blink them on and off. So. I added um, diffuse, spec, emission, and Z depth here. So if you need to do that, you just press any one of these and then click on this right here. And if you want to remove it, just press this one right here. So activate those AOVs. And now when you render it, let's see if we just open up Arnold. Let me grab this over here. So if you were to play your 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 render, you would notice that uh, under the beauty pass, we have all of these here now. So these are active AOVs which means that we can incorporate them into our render layers. So the next step there is to open up your render layer settings and basically create each pass that you wanted to do. So for this shot, I wanted to do, um, I wanted to do, let me hide this guy here. So I wanted to do a computer with a lit screen and a computer where it had a blank screen. So I kind of just duplicated and extracted the, the screen here and then added like a, a very simple shader with an emission on it. Um, so I wanted to do one pass here, which was very uh, simple scene, blank scene, blank screen, and then another pass where it had the screen lit, because I wanted to kind of comp those together and add flickering or something like that if I wanted to later on. Cool. So when you've added the, your desired AOBs that you want to use in your pass um, when you render it out, now the next step would be to create render layers. So you just go up into this tab right here, and then you would go and create layer. You would just name it. So render layer. Um, doesn't like spacing, that's fine. And then you'd right click and create collection. And this is where you would add all of the, the, the pieces in your scene that you want to incorporate into that render layer. So let's just say we wanted to add these pieces of geometry here. Just middle mouse drag, put that over here. There's a lot that I did not get into here, like expressions and adding overrides and things. I just created very simple render layers. So, um, and in order to make that renderable, when you export your your passes and everything when you finally do the the render sequence you want to make sure that this is checked right here right so this means that it is a renderable layer that you can uh, actually export it out of arnold so make sure that's checked and then the next step would be to you know you got everything 
basically set up, you just go into the rendering tab up here, render, render sequence, and uh, oh, there is something else we have to do here. You just want to go and make sure that these settings are good. So go into like the common, make sure that you have all of this information good. Um, and I found that just adding the, the camera uh, that I wanted to render from, just adding that there um, worked. So make sure all these settings are good. And then you would just go over here, select camera shape one, and then all render enabled layers. That's what we just did. So make sure that those layers are renderable. And then you would print, uh, make sure your project is set, of course, so you have an output for all of these uh, gigantic files or whatever that you're exporting. So um, render sequence and close, and that's basically it. So that's the Maya portion of the workflow. I'm just setting up a very simple scene, um, camera shot, adding some AOVs, and then doing the render layers exporting it out. So we're going to hop into After Effects and I'm just going to kind of break down um, the process of creating the scene and also a couple different things technically that were really helpful to keep in mind. All right, so we've hopped into After Effects and here I have just the, the beauty pass from that Maya render. Okay, so that that, that render from here, um, the first, just the, the very straight out render that we get is this, this beauty pass, which, which looks okay. But um, I wanted to really composite this scene and do, and do a lot of different things with it. And that's why we rented out separate layers um, so that we can really go in and tweak these things individually. So here I just have my sequences. I have pass one, pass two. And if we just open these up, right, um, I go to, let's say, the, the beauty of the screen that's lit up. We have the beauty of the beauty pass of the screen that is blank. And then in here, we have a bunch of these uh, the passes, the AOVs that we rendered out. So uh, we have like the diffuse which is the Diffuse Direct, we have uh, Specular. So we have a nice spec on that. And we also rendered out like the emission here. And if we go to the emission on this one, you can see the screen as well. And uh, we also have a Z depth path, which I'll get into in a little bit. But um, basically it's just, you have a lot more control if you render those out individually. So when you go into something like After Effects, you can really comp uh, composite these together and have a lot more control over each individual um, uh, layer and you can add a lot and tweak a lot artistically if you need to. So, uh, so here's the beauty pass and then I basically just went in and took all of these layers and just kind of comped them together to kind of get roughly where I was, um, kind of just get back to that, you know, original beauty pass. I'm just adding a little bit of contrast, kind of just isolating the frame so you're directing more attention here. Um, and then at this point I, I pre-composed all of these layers so I could go in and really, really tweak things. So um, here's kind of the power of render layers. So you can kind of really go in and if I go into these here, if I turn on like computer lights, um, you can see that we can turn this on and off. So we just have a lot more control over that. And then if you go into here, I just took that one uh, pass, duplicated it like eight times and then just isolated using masks, each in individual light and just keyed opacity. You know, we got a bunch of keyframes here, but um, just to make it look like they're blinking and stuff. So, um, yeah, there's just a lot of control you have there. Um, we added the, I took the specular of the lit screen pass, and I really just composited that together to kind of get, well, we'll get to those in a second, to kind of get this lit screen kind of look. Using that emission pass as well. So if I go in here to like the emission, we can see we have, uh, that emission pass you just can change the color using like uh, hue and saturation effect back here into the layer and then uh, the last thing I did was I added this kind of HUD display here which I did in a completely separate uh, layer altogether and just comp that in here so, um, so here's that kind of on its own here's kind of that screen the HUD and I just kind of made something quick just kind of something to just sell the idea um, but this is, uh, it seems like there's a lot going on here, but it was relatively simple to set up. Um, it's just that there's a lot of text with kind of a decoder animate in. So if I just go in here, the, like this one right here, just drag that onto these layers of text and then kind of change the keyframes a little bit. Um, with these shapes here, um, I used to do all of these in After Effects, which could work, but it's, uh, it's very time consuming. And After Effects doesn't handle complex shapes very well. So what I did was I actually just went into Illustrator and created all these um, in Illustrator. And then what I did from here was I just saved it as an Illustrator file. And the benefit of working um, with uh, Adobe is that you can work across different software. So you can just drop that Illustrator file into your, your After Effects project and work on it from there. 
Um, so just did some work on that. And then we really went in and I just added a, a ton of effects onto that comp just to make it look like, you know, it's an old retro screen. There's a lot of static. There's a little bit of scratching on, on the, uh, on the noise and everything. Um, I got a lens. There's a vignette and there's also a, a CC lens, which just kind of warps that a little bit to kind of get that. Cause we have this, this, uh, the monitor shape is kind of a rounded surface. So I wanted to kind of replicate that. So we added a lot of effects onto that. And then I wanted to, this was looking pretty good at the, at, at a certain point, but I wanted to add uh, depth of field, uh, which is where our, um, Z depth, Z depth pass comes in. And so a couple of things that I, I kind of realized and found out during this process is, uh, if you work with depth of field out of Arnold, you know that there's this horrible problem where you have, um, you have, you, you import your Z depth pass and then you get it working, but you have this really horrible blur that goes around your edge here. And it's really hard to get rid of. So I, I kind of figured out a little bit of a solution to that. Um, what I did was I basically just created the, the, the depth of field that I wanted. So kind of just getting a little bit of blur over here, probably a little bit too much, but, um, just to blur it out a little bit, you know, just to get that extra, you know, little bit of effect going on in the shot. And then I just took this straight. So with the kind of nasty blur that we have going on here, and I brought this into uh, another comp, which is where I used an alpha channel to mask out that, uh, that, that gross blur that we don't want. So couple things that I realized uh, when I figured this out, which is um, uh, when you work with EXR or TIFF files, which is what Arnold exports out by default usually, um, they usually come with an alpha channel. And of course you need to make sure that uh, you need to have that empty space in Maya, right? So anything that's, if I open up this camera here, so anything that's in this empty space is going to be transparent, okay? But we, we have a floor that kind of expands halfway through the frame, right? So if we go back to After Effects, you can see, um, if I turn this on, you can see that we don't have an, uh, uh, an alpha channel there. And this is the, the power of uh, render layers is that you could go in and, and, and fix these if you wanted to. So basically what I did was I just dropped in that beauty pass and just used it as uh, an alpha mat for our, for our layer comp right here. So it just cuts out that kind of gross blur that we don't want. Another thing I realized working on this project was that when you export a Zedith pass, it is a TIFF file or an EXR file usually, which means that it's going to be 32 bit, um, which is, which is a lot of color information. And when you work in After Effects, usually After Effects is not set up by default to be working in 32 bit. So when you import that Zedith pass into After Effects, it won't register your depth of field. Even if you change the curves and everything, it's not going to show up because your file needs to be uh, 32 bit. So just keep that in mind. If you're working with depth of field and Arnold, um, you, you need to have a 32-bit After Effects project. So when I finally tweaked this to the way I wanted it to, uh, I just did one more pass, the, the final comp, which I just kind of blended everything together, add a little bit of green, add a little bit of like lens dust, and you know, um, added a, a color let just to, just to blend everything together. And that's where uh, this shot uh, finally kind of came to a, a finishing point. So, so that's kind of an overview of what I did this week. I know it was uh, very rushed, um, and I went through a lot of steps very, very quickly, but um, I'm probably gonna post the entire uh, After Effects file on my Gumroad if you do wanna open that up and, and take a look at it. So uh, feel free to do that. I feel like I learned a lot this week, getting more into compositing and render layers and just the power of them. And I think that, you know, something I realized is that I'm definitely not using these enough as, as I should as a 3D artist, because there's just, there's so much you can do with them. So um, yeah, I've definitely learned a lot just technically and also artistically as well. But uh, I hope this was in some way beneficial to you. And, uh, you know, if you stick around, we'll get some more content going. But uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and, uh, and I'll see you next time.